Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and welcome to part two of the blues box <clears throat> basics. Blues box. All right, so in this particular video lesson, I want to show you different chords that you can interject instead of just the open open for the for the one. <clears throat> okay, so these chords here you can put in any place here that there's a one. So there's ones all across the first call section. There's ones right here at the second half of the response section. And there's a number one right here in the third measure of the turnaround section. So obviously you can do the open strings. If I put my finger here on the fourth fret of the high string, that's the major third. That's also a one chord. And of course, if whatever, whatever note I put on the high string, I can also put on the bass string. So you gotta curve your finger there and put your finger here on the fourth fret bass string. That's an inverted major chord. That's the major third there. So, or, and because I am tuned E, B, E, that would be an E major chord. Now I can also put what they call a flat seven, this note here, the third fret on the middle string, that would be the flat seven. So I'm gonna put both of those together. I'm gonna put the major third and the flat seven, and the top string is the root. This is the way it sounds. So that would be, in this case here, it'd be E dominant seventh. And again, that is a perfect one chord. So if I'm doing my blues line here, going to the so so you can see how we can start putting different uh, beats and different strumming patterns and different chords instead of just the open. Everybody does this. And that's just uh, strumming all the strings and then just doing the middle string on the second fret and then third fret. You can do one finger. You can do any finger. So a lot, a lot of those rhythms are like, So that's where I'm doing more than just four beats there. I'm doing one and two and three and four and one and two and so on the end is the upstring. One and two and three and four. Um, <clears throat> here is another one chord. I got my pinky here on the seventh fret, my middle finger here on the fifth fret, and my index finger here on the fourth fret. And this is a movable chord, you can move this around anywhere, but when it's out right here on these positions, it functions as the one chord. Now I can take it and invert it, and how I invert this chord here is this note here goes to the bass, and this note here goes to the high. The middle finger stays the same. So this is the same chord, just upside down. This one here stays the same. So that is another one chord. The next one chord here is, actually this is um, one of my favorites here. So the root is gonna be, we're gonna have a double root here, the, the open string, and then this fifth fret middle string, and then the fifth 
is going to be by my ring finger on the 7th fret. You can use your pinky if you want. And I always give it like a little wiggle just to make it sound good. And a lot of things you could do that. Now if I invert this by putting this finger up here and have the high string open, it's just the same chord but inverted. Okay, moving, <clears throat> moving along, you can also, remember how we were doing this note here for the major third? We well, can do the same thing, but one finger here on the seventh fret, and this is the fifth. Now, if I take this one finger and move it all the way up to the eleventh fret, this here is a major seven. If I move it down a half step, it becomes what they call a dominant 7. This one here is the flat 7, the same flat 7 as over here. It's the same note. So if you have the two top strings open, and then this finger here on the 10th fret, you get an awesome 1 chord. Now, because this is an octave, a lot of times I'll put my finger here, for the same chord, whether this is open or got my finger down here, it's the same note. Again, this is all E because I'm tuned to E. All these chords are basically derivatives of the E chord. So there's, there's so many examples that you can do there. Now every chord that we did down here was going to repeat itself in the upper octave. And so I'm not going to beat that horse. In other words, that the dominant 7 chord is here, just like it was down here. It's going to repeat itself up here. You could do the, instead of going down here, you could put a bar and then... So... Like I said, everything's going to repeat that we just talked about there. So all, all of these chords I just showed you can all function here in this blues box wherever you see a one. Now I want to show you some cool four chords. And there's three places where four chords exist. Maybe uh, four places if you want to put a four chord right here on the second measure. We'll, we'll talk about that in the part three. So here in part two, we are going to only play our four chord in measures five, six, and ten. All right, so the obvious one here we already talked about here is going to be a one finger bar here at the fifth fret. And if I wanted to put my major third, I would just stretch my pinky out and get that major third here. And again, I could invert it. So this, this is all the four chord. Minor. Now, like like I was going down here on the, uh, you can do the same same little rhythm here on. And that's just using my ring finger and my pinky to get these. And I got to have curves so that this string here goes all the way through to here. So I got to be be real careful to have a curve there, whatever. So that's a four chord. Here's another four chord. You remember when we did this one chord here? I had the um, middle finger on the uh, fourth fret here, and then my index finger on the third fret. Well, if I just take this chord and move it down a half step, where I'm on the second fret and third fret, and then bring my pinky up here, this is a nice four chord. Here it is again. Again, so that's pinky, top string, index, middle string here, second fret, and middle finger, third fret. 
So this would be the four chord, and again, it is a dominant seven because of this little pattern here. Um, let's see here. This one here I, I showed you was another four chord. Well, I can also do this chord shape here, which is the, the same as we did over here for our one chord. If I take this guy here and move it up to here, my pinky is at the 12th, my middle finger here is at the 10th, and my index finger is at the 9th. This is another four chord. Root. So, so from the root up here, the one, you come down here to the four chord. You could suspend it. So many things you can do here. But this is uh, uh, just another place that you can do a four chord whenever the four comes up here on your blues box. Um, let's see here. Okay, here's another cool one. I, 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 this is the first time I'm showing you this chord shape here, but I have my index finger here at the 10th fret. And then my top string is the 12th fret with my middle finger. And my ring finger here is at the 12th fret high string. Now I can also do this open or this is a four chord. So again, I can invert it. It's that guy. All right, so that's a couple of options that you have for the four chord. Now I want to talk about the five chord. The five chord occurs on the turnaround, the first measure and the last measure. Like we said before, the five chord can be done by one finger on the seventh fret. And of course you can do that all day long and of course get your major third if you like or inverted. The harmonics here at the seventh fret also serve as a good five chord. Um, one of my favorite chords here is my middle finger and ring finger at the seventh fret and then my index finger here at the fifth fret. And of course I like to bend just slightly this guy here. And I didn't mention, but this chord here also serves as a four chord here if you put it at the fifth fret and third fret. So that would be a four chord. And this would be a five chord. Well, one of my go-to five chords here is at the second fret, my middle finger top string and my ring finger bottom string. The middle string is open. So I got this five chord, this five chord, this five chord, and also, you remember this chord here, the, the one chord where I have my middle finger on the four and my index finger on the three? And if I go down a half step, it becomes the four chord. Well, if I come take this chord, move it up a half step and put my pinky there, it becomes a five chord. So my pinky at the seventh fret, index, middle string, fourth fret, um, my middle finger on the high string, fifth fret. This is another dominant seventh chord. So we call it a dominant seventh chord, but it's actually the five chord. Don't let that confuse you. It's a five chord, but the name of the chord is a seventh chord. All right, don't, 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 don't let that trip you up. We're calling it a five chord. The five chord is on the seventh fret and it's called a seventh chord. The four chord is here on the 
We can make it a seventh chord also. Basically, any one of these chords, you call it a seven. Here's, here's the one seven chord, four seven, and five seven. All right, so we have one chords, four chords, and five chords. They can all be called seventh chords because they have a one, a three, and a seven in them. Roots, thirds, and sevenths within the chord. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play uh, just a couple of, of cycles through this blues box using various chords and chord shapes. I think I'll use a pick. Oh, and that is the sound of a penny. Oh, it just fell out. Oh, here, while I'm open here. Um, first of all, I wanted you to, before I play any songs here, I just want you to hear the sound of these springs. Hear them, hear them banging in there? So if I do these chords, like, you can hear the. Okay, well, I want you to hear what it sounds like with the springs. Oh, and I do have picks, my emergency pick stash in here. Take those things out, take the spring off. Okay, so the springs are not off. I'll put them back on in just a little bit, but I want you to hear with this guitar or what it sounds like without the springs. Hear the difference? So it's really quiet now. It's so weird. So I just played the turnaround. All right, so here we go here. I'm gonna start with the turnaround and I'll go through twice and I'll end with the turnaround. If you like these videos, be sure to comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I do have links to the t-shirt below in the video description. And if you want to become a Patreon, 
There's information in my YouTube banner. If you want to see part three, you need to go to my Patreon page and check it out. All right, I'll see you in the next video.